So this right here is a Corsair K70, a great keyboard for gaming. That's it. I bought this keyboard earlier this year when I built my first gaming PC and I didn't do too much research. I didn't look into other gaming keyboards and I didn't look into custom keyboards and I just thought, hey, why not just buy Corsair because I already had their headset. I had their lighting inside my PC. So why not just get Corsair so it's easy on myself whenever I need to adjust the RGB and that way I don't have to deal with like the hassle of like having multiple softwares on my computer. But after using it for a couple months, here's one thing that bothered me about using the keyboard. Like bro, that sound, that rattle, I don't even know what you call it, but I just can't stand it. I couldn't stand it after a couple months. And yes, I was just ignoring it. Anytime I do work in front of a computer, it would just be so annoying that I wouldn't even want to type in front of the computer because it's just that annoying sound. But when it comes to gaming, it's fine. You know, you have your headphones on, you're, you hear the gunshots, you hear whatever the game that you're playing and it's muffling out that sound. But when it comes to just productivity work and typing in front of a computer, it is so annoying listening to that rattle and listening to that awful sound. I wanted to fix this and I was always interested in custom keyboards and watching people build their own keyboards online, the type test. It was always fascinating to see how people just put their own unique spin on their keyboards. And I like that custom look as well. And I was always thinking to myself, you know what? Why don't I just build my own custom keyboard? However, there's one thing about custom keyboard. And that one thing is that it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg in order to build your own custom keyboard. This hobby is not cheap whatsoever. And the parts, they take forever to come in and sometimes they're out of stock. You have to put your money down and wait months in advance in order for shipment to come in. So here are the things I was looking for in my custom keyboard. I wanted to have a 75% layout with the function row key. And I wanted to have a rotary knob to make sure I can control the media. I wanted to make sure it had the 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection or some type of Bluetooth connection because I want to switch over from you know different devices sometimes. Sometimes I'm working here in front of my computer and I'm using my iPad. I want to just easily switch from one device to another without having to use a different keyboard for that iPad. I also wanted to have RGB. Now that's a plus, that's not needed of course. And I wanted it to be aluminum because that would just give it that premium feel and look. So after doing some research, I finally found the board that I was able to be okay with and that was the NJ80. Now I checked off everything off my list except the fact that it's not aluminum. And the best part about it is that it was gonna save me some money. And to be honest, I was already spending a lot of money on this board already, in my opinion, when it comes to just building a custom keyboard. I know it's not a lot, but for me, you know, I didn't need a new upgrade for this keyboard, but I was willing to invest some money into it and build a better experience for myself for everyday use. So yes, I was happy that it was gonna save me some money because it was cheaper than the GMK Pro and the Q1. So the NJ80 I got was a bare bone option with the brass plate. They also have aluminum plate option as well. And some of these AliExpress stores do have the full board built out with switches and keycaps if you want that option and you don't want to mod the board at all. And it also comes with an extra knob color, a keycap and a switch puller, USB-C cable, which I won't be using because I do have the coil aviator cable that I bought. Most of the time I'll be using the 2.4 gigahertz Bluetooth anyway, so it doesn't really matter. The store I bought it from also had the option of adding in this pour on foam, which will go in between the plate and the PCB. For the switches, I decided to go with the C3 Tandarines because it's a smooth linear switch, which I can also use for gaming. I got myself these Sushi Tai Chi Cherry Profile keycaps, and I know they're probably some type of clone of some other set that's out there. And to be honest, I don't wanna spend $150 on GMK keycaps because that's just expensive and that's as much as my entire board itself maybe i'll spend that money in the future for a premium build where i will actually have an aluminum board and a really nice board in general but for this budget to mid-tier board i was not willing to spend 150 dollars on keycaps so i lubed and filmed all my switches and this process took me i think almost six hours to do maybe because i'm new at doing this but it was a lot of time and that's probably the most tedious part about building your own custom keyboard. I mean, I can't sit through it the whole six hours. I had to break it up into three intervals of two hours, but I finished it in a single day. And I don't know, in the future, I don't know if I want to do that again. 
Even though there's already foam for the bottom of the board, I decided to put some extra foam for the base. I put three layers of tape for the Tempest mod, and I also finished it with putting the pour on foam that I mentioned earlier in between the PCB and the plate. So here's the total cost of the board. I mean, as you can tell already from the title of the video, it's $275, but here's the breakdown of each component without the lube and the tools that I used in order to mod the board. So it was $80 for the switches. It was $20 for the aviator cable and $30 for the keycaps and $145 for the bare bone kit of the board. And this is with me going with that budget option of buying the keycaps and the aviator cable off AliExpress. That alone saved me, I think $150. And if I didn't buy those off AliExpress, I think this board would have cost me about $400 to build. And with that being said, just listen to the sound test because this sound test will change your mind of what you think about custom keyboard, even though they are pretty expensive. Just listen to the sound test. I'm gonna have the stock version first and then afterwards you're gonna listen to the mod version. Doesn't that sound good? I mean, I cannot go back to using a regular board made from a company unless they do a good job modding the board where the sound is decent enough. But this is gonna be my daily driver and my board that I'm gonna use for gaming and also productivity work that allows me to switch from different devices as well because of that wireless connection. So this, to be honest right now, is the perfect board for me. For those of you who are looking into building your own custom keyboard, just save your money. No, I'm just kidding. But there are ways to build a custom keyboard that isn't you know, out of your budget or that's gonna be really expensive. I mean, this to be honest, $275 for this board is already you know, quite of a reach for me. Uh, but it's really the, uh, the layout that I wanted and it has all the functions that I need in terms of it being wireless and switching between devices as well. But if you just wanna get started with like a 65% keyboard, there are options out there which are more in that budget range where you can build boards below $100. Um, maybe you can even start out right now with your own board. You might be able to do some modding or hot swaps on there and switch out the keycaps or the switches and you make it sound better than what it is now. I hope I didn't jump into this rabbit hole of building custom keyboards because it is not cheap. It is not cheap. I mean, who knows? Maybe this is just the start of it. I might be doing more builds in the future. I mean, it is fun. It is fun. It's like building your own PC. And like when I built this PC, it was so much fun and just being able to pick out my own parts. And that's the beauty and you know the, the fun of all this, right? Being able to customize your, your PC, being able to customize your own keyboard, your own desk layout. It's like customizing your own car and modding it and making adjustments to it. So it's personalized towards your you know, character or whatever you want to express. This is definitely an upgrade from my Corsair K70. I will actually be giving away this board in the future. Um, the goal is to hit a thousand subscribers. So once we hit that 1K uh, milestone, we will be doing this giveaway and I'll be sending out this board to one of you who are a subs uh, subscriber. And if you aren't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe so you could be in the giveaway when I actually make that video. And make sure you hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. That's going to be very helpful. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed to me just sharing my experience of upgrading my keyboard and more upgrades in the future, right? Whether it be keyboard, desk setup, PC builds, um, anything tech related, um, some tech reviews as well. If you do enjoy videos like that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Blah. Messed up. So if you enjoy videos like these and you want to see more tech videos in the future, more tech content, make sure you subscribe down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.